Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. Before we start digging through some treasures, I wanted to give a big shout out to one of our sponsors, Omaze, who has partnered with us again on a wonderful sweepstakes opportunity, a 4x4 Sprinter van with $80,000 in eco-friendly upgrades. Really, really cool van, and it supports the Mike Rowe Works Foundation. You might remember Mike Rowe as being the host of the TV show Dirty Jobs, and Mike has done pretty much every sort of trade job you can imagine. He's very passionate about the trades, and also about students not taking on a large amount of student debt. So he's created the Mike Rowe Works Foundation to get money in the hands of students, to get them on the job, get them trained, and get them in the workforce without going into a pile of debt. That's why supporting charities and non-for-profits has always been important to us, and we're pleased to partner with Omaze for this opportunity. Enter at omaze.com slash curiosity incorporated for your chance to win this really cool Sprinter van, and it's got $80,000 in friendly eco conversions. You can go camping, go fun, go on adventures, whatever you want to do. I'm sure you'll have a great time doing it. Check it out. You might win. I hope you do. Um, just enter online, follow the link, and donations will support the amazing work of the Micro Works Foundation. Hi guys, welcome to today's episode. Well, the other day I went to an estate sale and I bought a few things, but I'm most excited to show you this. Um, I've not gone through it in its entirety yet, but I peeked around a little bit and I was pretty impressed with what was inside. So uh, bear with me here. We're gonna dig through and go through today's treasures. I hope you like these videos. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We do um, unboxing videos of antiques. We go treasure hunting. Sometimes I pull cars out of fields and a little bit of house building renovations. Anyway, we do a lot of stuff. But today, it's all about going through this little tin. And just because it's a small tin does not mean it's not gonna be good stuff. Sometimes good things come in small packages. So let's dig through and see what we found. I mean, the tin itself is pretty cool. When you come across stuff like this, it is a fun find. It's probably a 1920s or 30s Tetley T tin. I love the graphics on it, even though it's a little bit worn out. Would have had orange Pico. It's got an elephant carrying a crate around because how handy is that? Actually, it's the disembodied floating head of an elephant that's carrying a box. Anyway, it's a neat thing. Melissa used to collect tea tins. Every time I see one, I kind of think they're neat. Um, let's open it up and have a look. First up, we have Perry Davis Painkiller. And, okay, this is the French side. Let's flip it around. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It was 50 cents. And what did it do? Um, it's an app. Okay, you can take internally. I was worried when something can be taken internally and externally. So internally, it'll help you with chills, common colds, cramps, diarrhea, coughs. Um, and externally, let's see. Well, you can use it for a sore throat. Sprains, bruises, frostbites, chill blains, bites and stings, strain muscles, it does everything. Um, you'd think this would, if this actually worked, they'd still be using it. Maybe they do somewhere. But uh, must if, a lot of these things are quasi snake oil and uh, contain an awful lot of alcohol in them. But look, it's actually still. I'm gonna just take this out. It's still all. It's still there. I mean, I don't think anybody really used much of this. Probably some of that is dissolved out of the top, but. Yeah, that does not look like anything I want to be putting in my body. But how cool is that? Still has the paper label on it. It's a little crinkled, but it's still there. Made in Montreal, Canada. And I'm not even going to... Oh, maybe I should take a whiff it. No, that's really on there. I don't think I want to unleash this. It'll be like when they open the Ark of the Covenant in Indiana Jones. A bunch of ghosts are going to come flying out of it. Um... Probably not the best thing to take nowadays, but really, really cool to find it with the uh, with the box like that. And I think, yeah, look, even the instruction booklet. Well, they were setting you up for success. It came with instructions, because if you're using it for 500 different things, I guess you want to have the instructions. So that's kind of a neat little thing. But we get into, what's this? 
hematite, I believe. It's magnetic. We've got some jewelry, so we've got some necklaces. Quite heavy. And I think there's probably a, a couple strands in here. It's hard to tell because they're stuck together. Yeah, there's probably at least two or three in there. Uh, let's see. We've got some shells and glass bead bracelet. Kind of more in the vein of costume jewelry and stuff. Another hematite and blown glass, it looks like. Pendant kind of looks like a crescent moon almost. And it looks like a matching, probably matching earrings. I think that's the other earring for right there. And we've got a bracelet. So it was some costume jewelry. Another one with, um, I think that's amylite. Maybe somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's fossilized shell that's been uh, put together to form this. Kind of neat. It's got a really interesting sort of look. You find those for sale in gift shops in our area because there's lots of dinosaurs. Okay, a chunk of wood. This is a might be sterling silver, but it's at the very least a silver plate. This is a, um, a lace, a, a boot lacer. Like you grab onto your laces and pull, so it'll pull your uh, laces nice and tight on your fancy Victorian sort of boots. Not something that we commonly use nowadays, but back then when you have, you should see how many laces were on those old boots. You probably would have needed something like this for sure. It'd probably take you an hour to get your shoes off. That's pretty nifty. Oh, okay, it's pocket watches. Got one, and it's American Waltham with fancy dial. Fancy enamel dial, gold inlay. Not working. I'm gonna open it up and see if I can kind of tell what grade it is, because that's where you tell what kind of watch it is. The higher the jewel, um, typically the better the watch when it comes to pocket. And American pocket watches are much better than um, Swiss. So they say Swiss for wrist, American for pocket. Let's open it up and see what the inside looks like. Okay, this is a hinged case. This would be quite early, right after Keywind. Um, probably would date to the 1800s. I'm actually going to look up that serial number and figure out what year it's from. Um, this one doesn't give me an idea of how many jewels it is, um, but it looks like it needs, look at that. It's broken. It needs a little TLC. That's okay. Watch like this can still be fixed. It looks like the mainspring wants to go. Um, but there's a little piece floating around in there and uh, we'll have to try and figure out what that's for, but it looks like it wants to go. It might have potential. Two things. One, it started working, um, even though the crown needs repair, but I looked up the serial number and it dates to 1883 and it's a 15 jewel watch, which is a, it's a oh, decent watch for that time. But 1883, that's going back a few years. You can easily look up that serial number at the top there and uh, find out a watch's age just by typing that in. Pretty, pretty neat. It's a good early watch. So the watch is working. It's a fancy watch. It's a nice looking watch. The problem is the crown is broken, so it won't wind. So that will need to go in. I'll have to find a replacement for it or see if somebody can fix that for me. That uh, it's not impossible. It's just a pain in the butt because you got to find somebody to do it. But the um, fact it works is good. That means the mechanism's okay. Let's have a look. I'm going to move this little piece over because you just don't know if you need it for something else. Another costume jewelry beaded necklace. Okay, there's something in there. We'll go through that in a sec. I'll just get the rest of the stuff emptied out. Another Waltham watch. This one is wound but not working. Not currently work anyway. Gold fill case, you can see the plating coming off. But Waltham is a good brand. Fancy little mirror. Little ladies mirror, silver. So, look at this. I'm guessing that's a compact. We'll open it up in a sec, but look, it has fairies on it. They're really popular around the turn of the century. Fairies were a big deal. Now let's open it up and see what's inside. Yep, you got your mirror, and you still have your little powder in there. 
your blush very red and it might be I can't see if it's stamped that might be silver but isn't that just the coolest thing with those fairies on there isn't that just lovely it looks like they're giving you a, a little kiss that's kind of a sweet thing okay I see a cameo oh look at this hang on we've got an antique cameo yep and we've got this I don't know what type of stone that is it's like a giant cubic or crystal of some kind with all these little cubits around pretty fancy kind of neat looking very iridescent and up with the box of jewelry I, I'm, I really have to educate myself more on this Howard watch company not overly familiar with these guys it's a nice slim watch I'll have to open up the back and see what brand that is Howard something might be like the department store it might who knows it's also wound and not working. So they all seem to be kind of broken. Illinois. Of course, sometimes you find the cheaper watches are the ones that actually work still. Yep, working just fine. That's not a very expensive watch, but uh, it is, eh, hang on, I'll open it up. It, it's Arabic dial, it looks like a railway watch, but. I don't think it's gonna be high jewel content. The back of this should just unscrew. I'm gonna unscrew it and see what's inside. I stand totally corrected. This is actually a high-end watch. 21 jewels is railway grade, and that is the bun special. This is actually quite a high-end watch. I didn't expect it from looking at the front because it just doesn't feel, it feels like a very generic kind of watch, but that's actually, you know, a really good one. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, and it's working, which is a bonus too. So this might actually be one of the better watches out of the lot. And here I misjudged it. Shows me to judge a book by its cover. I should know better by now. Okay, let's see. We're getting to the bottom of the barrel here. Ooh. Boy, I gotta be careful reaching in these buckets. Look what's at the bottom. That could take a slice out of your finger if you're not careful. Careful, it's a King Cutter straight razor. But if that was open a tiny bit, that rusty old blade would have cut right into me. But gotta be a little bit more careful. Okay. All right. Couple of really nice mechanical pencil. Nice antique mechanical pencil. Um, looks like a silver tip corn cob holder. Another fountain pen, and this is a Parker. This is the type of fountain pen people like to collect. It's got like that tortoise shell kind of look. Um, the cap still screws on nicely. Does have a nib? Does have a nib. People do still collect fountain pens. And uh, I have a friend, my friend Greg is a big fountain pen collector. He always oogles when I get these sort of fountain pens in. So I'm sure, looks like there's some more jewelry in the bottom. Another costume kind of piece with some, those look like gold nuggets, but I doubt whether it is. It might be worth testing out, you never know. Looks like the matching ring to that necklace. The other corn cob holder side, there's an earring with the shell on it. This feels like a razor, and it is a razor. An old Gillette, probably. Yeah, it's a Gillette. Might be gold-plated. They did make a gold-plated Gillette razor. Fancy little case. Uh, ring. FHS. It's probably silver. I would guarantee that's a silver signet ring. A little box. And, oh, look at this. That is a big honking. <laughs> I think that's actual gold. That is a big, I'm going to get my loop out and see what it is. That's a, um, that's a Masonic ring. I keep finding Mason stuff lately, but that's a fancy Mason's ring. It's got a big old honking diamond in the middle of it. That's a big, that's a hefty chunk of gold right there. Somebody, that's definitely a man's ring. And then matching cufflinks, which might also be gold. I don't see a mark on them, but really really nice if you're into masonic stuff which some people are afraid of and some people collect 
It's not for me to judge, it's for me to sell. That's pretty good. But let's dig into, okay, actually let me find the loop first and I should find my diamond tester, I should do this right. Uh, I'm just gonna go find that, I'll be right back. 14 carat, that's a big, that is a big piece of, uh, I found my loop. Didn't find the diamond tester yet, but that's a 14 carat ring and it's a big one too. That's a big chunk of gold right there. Okay, you could not find the diamond tester, but it's time to open up this little bag. Look, look what I found. Okay, I gotta dump this out. Look at what's in here. That looks like actual gold chain, possibly, all bagged up. Look, gold ring, big, another big gold ring with what looks like a piece of amber in it. Let's see if it's marked. Looks like it's marked maybe 10 carat in there. I'll get the loop out and have a look at that. Look, gold ring, gold hole, diamond ring. That's a cluster. Diamond, I'm gonna guess diamond and emerald. A random dog. A gold doggy. It's really heavy though. Look at all this. It's like pirate treasure. And what else? I don't know if all of this is gold or if some of it's just plated. We had so much costume jewelry in the beginning, I wasn't gonna get too excited that there might be something better in here, but look. Okay, I was excited when I saw this tin because of the watches that were in there, but I have a feeling this little bag is where the money's at. Okay, that's everything from in there. We've got little earrings with, it looks like a pearl and maybe uh, rubies or something. I'm gonna have to get some of this stuff checked out because I simply don't know what's costume jewelry. Like to me, that feels like costume jewelry, but it's mixed in here with all these like little gold chains, like um, herringbone chains and links and uh, random looking <laughs> assorted, I don't know. That just looks like costume stuff, but I'm gonna have to really check this stuff over really well because there is um, really good stuff mixed in with average stuff here. So what happens when you buy a sort of a family collection like this, you just don't know what's gonna be inside of it. But look, look at all this, look at all this bling. Right off the bat, look at that. I'm gonna get the loop out and just make sure these are gold and not like, I don't wanna get too excited, but I can see a stamp on that one already. 14 carat. And that's the one I think says 10. I'm just gonna double check, I'm gonna grab the loop. Well, this ended up being a pretty good day. I bought this tin because when I peeked in, I saw the pocket watches and the pens and I thought, okay, well there's, you know, some guy stuff in here, some cool stuff. I was not expecting to find this treasure trove of jewelry. Now it actually looks almost like rose gold. Okay, I gotta stop getting excited about this stuff. I am gonna sort through, make sure this stuff is real, and hopefully that it's not fake, because I don't wanna get too excited and then find out, but they are stamped, and judging by the quality of the watches and stuff that are in here, I don't have any reason to believe that these things are, you know, I've handled enough nice jewelry in the last little while to kind of recognize the good stuff, and I think there's a few really good pieces here. What a fun load of stuff! Now I've got my work cut out for me to get it all sorted, organized, and ready for resale. So, oh look, there's another one. There's another, maybe an onyx with a signet. Didn't even see that. It's marked on the back. See, I get talking, I think I'm wrapping it up here and then I find another ring. Hopefully it doesn't say plated. Um, I don't know, 10 carat, okay. Well, that's still a heavy 10 karat ring. Very, very cool lot. Pretty thrilled about this one. <laughs> it's gonna take a while to sort through, but what a haul. 
I thought I was done going through the, the tin here and I looked in the bottom and there's the other earring with the shell on it and another one of those corn cob holders. So just when I thought I was done, I wasn't done. Um, so I've got my work cut out for me tonight to go through this stuff, but I really do love finding treasures like this. It's, what's it's what really keeps me interested in this hobby. Nothing wrong with finding a batch of jewelry and gold rings. Um, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. Um, I'm going to bag, sort, tag, and try to find my diamond tester and the loop here and try and figure out what everything is so we can mark it properly. But really cool haul. Hope you enjoyed going through the bucket of treasure with me. <laughs> I'm gonna call Melissa up so she can see what we found too. Um, but you guys have a wonderful day. We'll see y'all soon and bye for now.